For the last couple of weeks, Alex and I have been really looking forward to this trip. But sadly, due to a suspicious cough that Alex developed last week, he isn't able to come. So behind the camera today is Josh, the fishing tutorials cameraman. And basically this film's gonna be about how to get the most out of a carp fishing trip to France. We're in France now and there's approximately three and a half hours drive before we get to the lake, so it's not too bad. All I've got to remember is to drive on the right and that the speed limits are in kilometres an hour, not miles an hour. After a good look around all of the swims on the lake, the spot that we've chosen to fish is known as the beach. There's enough space in this swim for both me and Josh, and there's been a couple of fish crashing out in front of it as well. So we're quite eager to get set up, but it's, uh, it's imperative that you take your time, don't get too carried away, um, get set up properly, find your spots, take your time with it all, because uh, you've, you know, you've got a week. There's no point rushing out and putting loads of bait out on a certain spot and then regretting it later on wishing you'd started somewhere else. So we're gonna get set up. Me and Josh are gonna, which side do you wanna fish, left or right? I don't mind, should we flip a coin? That sounds like a good idea. Um, and hopefully we have an amazing week full of giant fish, including Josh's PB. How big does it need to be? Over 29. Over 29 perhaps. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna happen, come on. We've now been fishing for getting on for 20 hours or so, so not a full day, but the rods have been out a little while. And so far, this is still dry. No bites as of yet. We did see a guy down the bank, he caught one, and it happened to be one of the real good ones, upper 50s. Like a fish like that would make your week and he had that straight away, but it's not always like that and it's important that you don't get too um, impatient. You know, you've got to manage your expectations. You wouldn't turn up at your local lake at home, cast the rods out and expect to catch massive fish straight away. Fishing isn't really like that. So we're going to uh, be patient. There are fish in, in our area. We're confident in our baits and rigs. You could get sort of itchy feet and start reeling rods in and trying somewhere else and reeling them in again and casting them out there and then putting some bait here and bait there and you, you could end up just not really giving any particular spot the time to actually do a bite. So because we've got the confidence in what we're using, we're going to sit tight, cross our fingers and our toes, oh, I can't do that, and our eyes and uh, hopefully something happens. They're big powerful fish, aren't they? Go on, Josh. Go on. Yeah! <laughs> How good does that feel? Yeah, man. Off the mark. Got a fish for the video, that's the most important thing. <laughs> but yeah, I think we deserve it to be fair. Been working hard and yeah, finally got the reward. Oh, look at that. Our first fish out the road lake here at Gigantica. Not even been fishing 24 hours yet. There's been so many fish showing. 
We thought we'd get one quicker to be honest, but we were patient, put a lot more bait in this morning and the fish have turned up. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. Yeah. Oh, just grab oh, yeah. I'm gonna help you take Well, here it is, my new overall PB. Come as part of a triple take down on the road late. Like I said earlier, putting the bait in has definitely made the fish come in. And yeah, we started getting a few bites. How big was this one? 38. Go. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <joke. laughs> <laughs> I was about to put some more bait into Josh's spot because Josh has had a few bites now and the fish really seem to be feeding well in his area. And then this one caught me by surprise. It does tend to be just when you start getting worried, that's when it starts happening. And I was sitting there patiently, hoping for one. And uh, yeah, the fish have really shown up in our swim now. Well, Josh was showing me how to catch carp at Gigantica. And then my rod finally went off. It's a lovely common. That'll do me. If I don't catch another one this trip, I'll be happy. But um, I feel like there might be more to come. Bye-bye quite relieved really that myself and Josh have both caught fish now. It was beginning to look like most of the fish were over sort of in his area, that was where the bites were coming from, uh, but I got a bite and then I had another bite soon after that whilst I was trying to hold the fish, uh, but that next bite uh, actually fell off. We're using barbless hooks as per the rules here and you do drop the odd fish, but that's fishing. Anyway, I've put a new bait on, rig's not too different from what I'd use back home but we'll get into the sort of technicals of the rigs and baits uh, probably tomorrow. Anyway, I'm gonna get my rods all ready, uh, clipped up and everything. Not gonna cast out because we're just about to head across the road to the uh, main lake lodge where we're all gonna have dinner together. And then when we get back, the rods will be ready to cast straight back out. We're good then? Cheers. Look at that, for a bit of morning's carp fishing. Seems like the action's getting better as the trip goes on. Definitely. We'll see what's to come. Oh, no one wants to go. Beautiful. Farewell, Mr. Carp. Good work, man. <laughs> An important thing to consider when you're fishing quite a long way from home is that you can't just nip back and grab yourself a spare battery for your bite alarm if it runs out. You're likely to be out on the bank for a little while, there might not be any tackle shops nearby, and just to help your trip run more smoothly, it's worth bringing plenty of spares and supplies in case you run out of things. I've got a little pouch which is left in my van, just with some extra hook baits. Uh, it's unlikely that I'll use up, you know, all of the hook baits that I've got in the swim, but just in case I do, and a certain bait's really working well, I've got a spare tub 
of all my favourites left in the vehicle. As well as that, I've got a larger pouch here, which has got some vital things in, such as if my bite alarms run out of batteries, I've got a big gold packet of batteries. If my head torch packs up uh, and just stops working, I've got a spare one. These are the sorts of things which you think, oh, my head torch is fine, it's not broken in 10 years, but you go to France and on the first night, it's gonna break. It's just, that's how, that's, that's how the world works. If I get a big bad bird's nest and my braid all tangles up and gets into a mess, I've got a spare spool so I can re-spool. Um, you gotta think about those worst case scenarios because it's unlikely that you'll crack off and lose your spawn, but just in case you do, I've brought a spare. These are the sorts of things that are really worth uh, keeping in mind and packing in your van. Underneath here, I've also got two cardboard boxes full of bait. The amount of bait that you want to bring on a trip really depends on where you're going. We're here on the road lake at Gigantica, which is a heavily stocked venue. It's got a lot of big carp in it and they can get through a lot of bait. We did our research beforehand and worked out that we needed to bring quite a lot of boily pellet that sort of thing so we brought i think about 60 kilos now i understand for a lot of people watching this video 60 kilograms of boilies a costs quite a lot of money and it's also just a lot of bait but on a venue like this if you want to have the best possible uh, session you've got to give them the bait you've got to hold them in your swim conversely there's other places in france or you know in the rest of europe where you probably wouldn't use more than five kilograms of bait in an entire week. It's definitely worth researching what sort of venue you're fishing. High stock, full of fish, you're gonna to wanna to bring plenty of bait. It's better, in my opinion, to have a little bit too much bait. You, you could go, I'm probably not gonna catch very many and only bring a little bag and then you end up having a session of a lifetime and over the first couple of days you end up using all of it and then you have gotta sit there for the rest of your trip wishing that you had brought um, more. There's another box behind me as well, which has got spare clothes in, it's got a spare coat. It's basically just worth thinking about. Any eventuality, what bits and pieces might you need? Yes, the forecast says it's gonna be nice and sunny, but what if it pours down with rain? Bring your waterproofs and uh, be prepared. Check that out. Another new personal best for me. Absolutely smashing the other one. This mirror at 47.8. My realistic target was a 40, so the dream is a 50, but to get another 40, yeah, it's made the trip. It's been unbelievable. <laughs> That's a beast, Josh. Massive, isn't it? Look at that. Whilst we're here in France, I'm actually using tackle that's not too different from what I'd use back home in England. It's a myth that if you're traveling to France, you all of a sudden have to use massive hooks and the latest complicated wonder rig. Truth be told, the fish that are swimming around in this lake are the same species as the fish that are swimming around in your local lake back home. The only difference is they might be a little bit bigger. I'd say the most important thing to keep in mind if you're heading out to, to, you know, to do a carp fishing holiday somewhere in Europe is the fish might be bigger and therefore you might need slightly stronger tackle than you'd use at home. But if the lake isn't particularly weedy or snaggy, you don't have to suddenly go and put like 30 pound line on and size one giant hooks and stuff like that. The setup that I'm using on this session is almost the same as what I was using on the river back home just a couple of weeks ago. Um, the actual rig is a ready tied basics carp rig. These are cheap. These are very simple rigs. And some people will look at that and be like, what, you, are you crazy? You've gone all the way to France, like you're fishing for potentially 50 pounders and you're just using a cheap, simple, ready tied hair rig. Well, yes I am. And it works great for me at home and I'm sure it will work great here as well. The hook bait that I've decided to use is a 15 mil boilie uh, tipped off with a bit of uh, fake corn. Josh has got a fish. Why does this happen when you're trying to talk to the camera about rigs? Hey, 
is the good thing about barber shops. Yeah, I like that. that you... uh, oh, Josh. What's it got? <laughs> That's right. But yeah, knowing you get a barb in the net. Yeah. It takes you so long to get it out, but no. Look at it's only a little. <laughs> we were rudely interrupted there by Josh's rods screaming off with another nice common. But the uh, the rig that I'm using uh, is, as I was saying, a simple ready tied rig. Uh, the hook bait, 15 mil boilie little bit of fake corn on top that is because feeding mostly boilies uh, going around the other side using the catapult scattering them around the area and using a boilie on the hair makes sense because they're eating the boilies that are all around it but the little bit of corn buoyant corn takes away some of the weight from the hook helps it go up into the fish's mouth better and to be honest it's just a presentation that i feel really quite confident in the only other thing that i wanted to mention about coming to France is that whilst the rigs can be whatever you're confident in, whatever you're, you know, you like using, uh, it can be worth bringing some uh, more resilient hook baits for your rigs. For example, fake corn, tiger nuts. Um, I've got uh, like a plastic dumbbell here as well. Um, this can be because France can often have um, these very small catfish. I think they're called poisson chat or something like that they can be dreadful for stealing your bait, as can the uh, crayfish, the big signal crayfish with red red claws. They, they're in a lot of the lakes out here. And if you're getting bugged by crayfish, it's great to have some hook baits that you know, will stay on through the night and not get stolen. Last thing on the tactical front is that I'm using the same rods and reels that I would use back home for a lake of this size. Uh, the fish, in this lake are obviously a lot bigger than what I'm catching at home. It's nice to have a rod that can handle that, line on the reel that can handle that. Um, and the rod is a three pound test curve, 12 foot carp rod. And I got 15 pound carp line on the reels. If you're going somewhere that's like really snaggy, full of weeds, basically just go as strong as you can. Um, if you're fishing somewhere that's not got really that much features in it, it's just a clean, you know, bowl then you can get away with basically exactly the same stuff you'd use at home, 12 pound line, whatever. I said that was the last thing, it's not actually. In this tub, I've got leads. Obviously, whenever I go fishing, I bring a selection of leads with me, but because we are here in France for a longer period of time, I brought more leads than I normally would. I got a real selection in here because I didn't know whether I was gonna be margin fishing or casting at range. And when you're on a session like this and there's a chance of you catching loads, bring plenty of leads just in case. And that's that. Cue the bite on Josh's rod. Or maybe my rod, we'll see. feeling that this is bigger than the others. I don't want to say too much. I would be massively excited if I catch a 50 pounder. Yeah, definitely. Like that would be amazing. I've always said the 40 is like, was a realistic target. But a 50, but a 50 is like the target, if that makes dream. sense. That's the dream. That's a big one. You know what that means, Carl? No, it does. <laughs> Eight. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't think it was a PV. It's a PV. Congratulations. Wow. Well done. Someone got themselves a new PV. Someone's about to get wet. <laughs> two, two, one. Yum. <laughs> I got a save. <laughs> I am drenched. <laughs> That's why you come to France. Hopefully this video helped you learn some stuff. Get out here, catch some beasts and get soaking wet. It's very fun.